All right, guys, how's it going? So I was in the middle of a video yesterday, actually more like towards the end of it, a short video by my standards, and I get a message to check out AMD's channel because there was an NDA lifting in four minutes. So I thought, right, I better check that one out. And this is what I found. AMD Ryzen 7 released with Lisa Sue on stage, and this is what she had to say. Today is a really big day for AMD, and actually it's a really big day for all PC gamers and content creators and everybody who loves high-performance processors. Today is all about Ryzen. Our goal is to show you product specs, benchmarks, demos, maybe a few other things. And most of all, we're here to answer your questions because the time for Ryzen has arrived. Now, she kind of rambled on a bit for the first five minutes or so, talking about the history and the OEMs and that kind of thing. But things started to get interesting around five and a half minute mark when she started talking about IPC. You're probably aware that AMD had been targeting 40% IPC, that's instructions per clock, uplift with Ryzen over their excavator core. 40% is quite a lot when you consider that Intel generally manages 5% every other year. 40% is a massive amount of IPC. However, AMD was coming from a much lower baseline due to the pretty bad IPC of their bulldozer CPU. But even with that, there had been murmurs that AMD had exceeded this number. And now we got to find out by how much exactly that was. According to AMD, the Ryzen CPU has beaten their excavator core, the last generation CPU core, by 52% more instructions per clock. And they're just getting started. Obviously. What exactly does this mean though? What do they use to measure it? Well, if we go to the footnotes at the end of the slide deck, we can see that the generational IPC uplift for the Zen architecture versus Pile Driver, that's their old architecture, the 8350 and the 8370FX, so that's not their newest excavator architecture. But regardless of that, the Zen architecture was 52% higher as measured with spec int 06. So that is both CPUs at a fixed 3.4 gigahertz. And also that the generational IPC uplift for the Zen architecture versus excavator, the one we were expecting to see, is 64% as measured with Cinebench R15, that's one thread, and spec and 06, again at a fixed 3.4 gigahertz. And further down we can see the spec and 06 scores, where pile driver actually scores higher than excavator, now you might think spec int 06 and Cinebench R15 are these legitimate benchmarks or has AMD simply cherry picked the best cases? And the answer to that is no, these are not cherry picked. These are in fact well-known industry standard benchmarks. If you need any more evidence of that, this is Intel's i7-6950X evaluation guide. So this is what the press gets from Intel before reviewing their CPUs. And we can clearly see under the recommended benchmarks, Cinebench R15 and Spec CPU 2006. So based on that, AMD has legitimately increased IPC by a massive 52% from generation to generation. We then got the world's first proper die shot of the Ryzen CPU. And Lisa told us that it has 4.8 billion transistors and over two kilometers of signal wiring, which is just mind boggling stuff. And she also mentioned on more than one occasion that they were running lots and lots of wafers. And today we learned over at DigiTimes that their initial March shipment target is expected to top 1 million units. Now that is actually quite a lot for this market segment, but the motherboard guys have really bought into this as well as the boutique PC builders. So it's off to a really promising start. And we also got an up close shot of the CPU itself with a very nice logo emblazoned over the heat spreader. I was following this one a couple of days ago when I saw a leak of a tray of CPUs and people were suggesting that, yeah, okay, very nice, but it's only the press that will get these. But nope, apparently every Ryzen CPU sold is going to have this really smart logo on the heat spreader. People talk about AMD's marketing, myself in fact talks about AMD's poor marketing, but this kind of stuff is really quite nice. There is something about that logo that looks really good. And to be honest, I've been pretty impressed by AMD's entire rise in marketing from the start. They've really upped their game here. But IPC relative to bulldozer, die shots, logos, that's all fine and well. What we really want to know is about the CPUs themselves. 
What's the performance like? How much are they gonna cost? Those are the two things and the only two things that we should really care about. Now, the eight core 16 thread CPUs will be called Ryzen 7. And first up was the Ryzen 7 1700X which AMD claims is a great gaming and creator CPU. The 1700X was the CPU which we recently saw demoed. 3.4 GHz base with a 95 watts TDP. It did of course have a disabled turbo boost, but now we can see that the turbo boost goes up to 3.8 GHz. So 3.4 GHz base and 3.8 GHz single core turbo. And we got to see AMD's own benchmarks in Cinebench again where it actually beat the Core i7-6900K. Now these are AMD's own numbers, and there's been a little bit of consternation over whether these are accurate or not. I've been taking a look at reviews across the web, and Cinebench is generally a very reliable benchmark, but the numbers are kind of all over the place. I think what's happened here is that AMD has benchmarked the i7-6900K using the Intel stock cooler. So that could be causing it to throttle, especially as the 6900K is not a very efficient CPU. It gets hot pretty fast in fact. But regardless of that, 4% faster than the i7-6900K and it completely lays waste to the 6800K by almost 40%. As Lisa pointed out, this is mostly due to the 1700X having two extra cores and four extra threads compared to the 6800K. Regardless of how this all shakes out in the end, it's pretty impressive performance. Next up was the flagship, or what we believe to be the flagship, Ryzen 7 1800X, which we learned has a 3.6 GHz base speed and a 4 GHz boost. And this is what Lisa had to say about it. So let's take a look at some live demos of the 1800X in action. And what I'd like to show you is Cinebench uh, running live. Uh, what we see is Ryzen 7 1800X on the right, going head to head against Intel 6900K. And as you guys know, we're rendering you know, one of these complex 3D models, and we're watching to see which one of these finishes faster. We have a couple more seconds to go. It's tight, but you can see it as this completes, the 1800X finishes faster than the 6900 by about 9%. So this actually says, I can say today, that the Ryzen 7 1800X is the fastest eight core desktop processor in the market. The Ryzen 1800X is the fastest eight core desktop processor, 9% faster in Cinebench R15 multi-thread compared again to the 6900K, which may or may not be throttling. Also interesting, however, was the Cinebench R15 one thread, so the single thread score, which was identical to the i7-6900K at 162 points. Now we believe that the 1800X probably running around 4.1 gigahertz, and the way that these numbers make sense would be if that were the case, and if the i7-6900K was running Turbo Boost 3. And at the very end of the slide deck, we can see the system configurations. It's a rather small table, but I found a bigger one. And on closer inspection, we can see that the 6900K did in fact have Turbo Boost 3 at 4 GHz. To be frank, I would not have enabled this had I been AMD, as to me it's simply just like overclocking. It's a bit of a grey area though, but it's interesting to see that given the choice here, AMD has chosen to put their competitor CPU in the best light. Now maybe they didn't do that with the stock cooler, there has been some talk about them only using dual channel memory. Obviously Intel's high-end desktop CPUs can run quad channel, but it doesn't actually make any difference to Cinebench. The results are identical, regardless of whether it runs dual or quad channel. But we can see here in this table that they did use the Intel stock cooler, Turbo Boost 3 on, and dual channel memory. Whether or not the 1800X will win more than it loses, once the reviews are out, we're going to have to wait and see. Regardless of that, it's incredibly impressive already. And finally, we got the Ryzen 7 1700, the world's lowest power 8-core desktop processor. Once again, it's 8-core 16 threads at 3 GHz base, so it's pretty low base clock and a 3.7 GHz turbo, but only a 65 watt TDP. I think it's safe to say that the ghost of Bulldozer's terrible power draw is being laid to rest here, and then some 16 threads at 65 watts TDP. That is 
incredible engineering. And this one is going up against the 7700K. Now, I actually talked about this in a recent video where I suggested that AMD would put an 8-core, 8 8-thread 8 CPU up against the 7700K. As it stands, there does not appear to be any 8-core, eight 8-thread 8 CPUs. Reason for which is AMD's simultaneous multi-threading appears to be very, very good. But I was expecting an 8-core, eight 8-thread 8 CPU with higher clock speeds. But apart from that, I pretty much nailed this one because AMD is offering more cores and more threads, but they're also being honest about this because Lisa did state on numerous occasions that the 7700K does have higher clock speeds. This is a tough matchup because obviously the 7700K is a very popular gaming CPU, which really comes down to its clock speed. As you might expect, the 1700 absolutely smashes the 7700K in Cinebench R15 multi-thread. But do take note that AMD is not showing the single-threaded score. But Cinebench wasn't the only benchmark on show, so let's take a look at what else we got to see. What you're seeing here is actually a gaming demo showing the new Sniper Elite 4. And both systems are actually using our dual Radeon RX 480s in Crossfire. On the left-hand side, you see Intel 6900K. On the right-hand side, you see Ryzen 7 1800X. You can also see the uh, frames per second in the upper right there. You can see both are running about mid-70s or so. At the start, I actually thought the Intel system was running better, and it did appear to be. However, it became obvious that the AMD system appeared to have much higher FPS scores at certain points. There's an almost identical scene, and we can clearly see the lead for the AMD CPU. It was pretty fleeting, however, but it wasn't the only time. And at yet another point, in this comparison image, we can see that the AMD system almost hit 100 FPS, at the same point where the Intel system only had 74 FPS. I've had a good look through this a few times now, and it's pretty clear, especially towards the end, that the Ryzen 1800X would have had a higher average frame rate here, quite often in the 80s, whereas the Intel system spent more time in the 70s and never actually went above 80 frames per second. I don't know exactly what it means, but we have seen before that Ryzen appears to be pretty good, at least against the 6900K in gaming. The last time we saw it was in Battlefield 1, where the CPUs were pretty much tied, although some commentators had suggested that it was running better on the Ryzen system. You might know that Battlefield 1 is a very well multi-threaded game, and that may explain it. And the obvious answer here is once again, Sniper Elite is likely to be very well multi-threaded, and it is of course running DX12. But from what I can tell about the game's CPU performance scaling, over at Guru of 3D, they found basically identical performance between even two cores and eight cores. And over at Dark Side of Gaming, we see the same thing. Even in DX12, this game relies heavily on a single CPU core or thread. I've got no idea how valid this is, but it seems pretty interesting all the same. Every major motherboard vendor has an AM4 Ryzen platform, multiple AM4 Ryzen platforms. We will have more than 82 motherboards at launch. This is our best ecosystem ever. And for those of you who want to buy your systems pre-built, we also have a large array of options here. We have more than 19 boutique PC builders that will be available on day one of launch, and that will increase over the next 30 days to 200 different system builders worldwide that will have Ryzen-based systems. And these systems, as you know, will be absolutely gorgeous and have tremendous capability. So as you move forward, you can not only expect the boutique system builders, but over the next couple of months, you can expect every major OEM to have a gaming tower with AMD Ryzen. Again, this is the broadest ecosystem that we've had because there's tremendous pent-up demand for Ryzen. AMD's best ever ecosystem with 82 motherboards. I certainly can never remember a time when AMD had 82 motherboards released for a platform, over 200 boutique system builders worldwide to start with, and then every major OEM. And this one is important because there was some talk that maybe Ryzen wasn't good enough because the major OEM guys, we're talking guys like Lenovo, Dell, HP, those guys, they didn't seem all that interested. But now we've learned that 
every major OEM will have at least one gaming tower. And these guys are obviously very important in terms of volume. If AMD is to get back up to 20 plus market share, they have to be in with these guys. And it seems that they are. But shouldn't be a surprise because Ryzen is clearly a very capable CPU. There's only one thing left to talk about then. And that is the prices. The Ryzen 7 1800X at 9% faster than the Core i7-6900K by AMD's own numbers, the new 8-core desktop performance champion will be less than half the price. $499 for the Ryzen 7 1800X compared to $1050 for the i7-6900K. I think it's safe to say that the i7 won't cost $1050 for much longer. The Ryzen 7 1700X comes in at $399, $25 cheaper than the Core i7-6800K, a CPU which is simply no match for it. By my reckoning, the 1700X will be a very popular CPU indeed. The i7 is going to need a massive price drop to remain relevant. And finally, the Ryzen 7 1700, with its significant multi-threaded advantage over the i7 7700K for less money. $329 versus $350. For me, this is the tougher sell because people are going to look at the gaming performance and there's just no way that this Ryzen 7 can compete with the 7700K. Not yet, but over time the more threads could of course become relevant. And it also has to be said, in GPU bound situations, you would expect these CPUs to perform basically identically. There may well be more interesting options for gamers later on though, when we see the 6 core 12 thread CPUs. So that's pretty much wrapping it up for Ryzen on the shelf worldwide on March the 2nd. You can probably figure out when the reviews are going to go live as well. And pre-orders are now available. From what I can tell, Rather unsurprisingly, they are selling out really fast. 2016 was not a great year for tech. 2017 has got off to the best possible start. Competition is what is good for you. And it's been a very, very long time since we had it in the CPU space. You can probably figure out that I'll be pretty busy next week. I'll catch you later, guys. 